Hi everyone, and welcome to Reach Law Talks. My name is Steve George. I'm speaking today as Senior Advisor and Director of Reach Law UK. I have a long background in the aerospace industry, in particular in supply chain and engineering management. I led chemical regulation cross-functionally across a di diverse multinational for over 10 years and led on the subject for EU aerospace and defence industry. For transparency, I am also a senior advisor to Root Pedersen Public Affairs in Brussels, supporting their chemicals, environment, sustainability and circular economy cluster. Welcome to part two of my two-part series on EU chemical risk management. In part one, I outlined the rights and obligations of producers, formulators and end users of substances on their own and in mixtures, of article manufacturers and suppliers. In this part, I look at interventions the authorities can make and the consequences of these. A substance can be identified as a substance of very high concern, or SVHC, based on hazard class. The existing classes are Category 1 carcinogens, mutagens or reprotoxins, substances which are persistent, bioaccumulative and toxic, or very persistent and very bioaccumulative or a catch-all term of substances of equivalent concern. Studies are ongoing to extend this list under the EU's Chemical Strategy for Sustainability. Once a substance is agreed by ECHA's Member State Committee to become an SVHC, declaration above 0.1% weight by weight is compulsory in safety data sheets for substances and mixtures and in accordance with Article 33 of REACH for Articles. Retail consumers of articles have a right to this information free of charge on request. Regulatory compliance requires a declaration must be made, but does not require removal of the substance at this point. Many retailers may however demand removal of SVHCs from products because of communication obligations or because of reputational concerns without authorities taking any further action. Identification as an SVHC also identifies as a substance as a candidate for the authorization list in REACH Annex 14. Addition to the authorization list is a major step and requires agreement by the Commission's REACH Committee. Once on that list, the substance may not be used in the EU as a substance or mixture after a defined sunset date unless the specific use is covered by an authorization held by either an upstream supplier or by the downstream user of the substance. Authorizations are reviewed by ECHA's Risk Assessment Committee and Socioeconomic Analysis Committee before agreement by the European Commission via the REACH Committee. An application for authorization is an exceptionally time intensive and costly procedure for both industry and the authorities. Specialist service providers will likely be needed to assemble reports on analysis of alternatives, chemical safety, and socio-economic consequences. Companies that can make a robust case accounting for need, risk, and economic consequence are expected to get their authorizations agreed. Authorizations are time-limited, but renewable. Where industry has a choice to swap to another substance, most will substitute rather than undergo the extreme costs and uncertainties of the authorization process. Authorities may alternatively choose a restriction route. Again, the Annex 15 dossier format is used to make a case for a restriction. Such a case may be made in a range of circumstances, such as if there are uncontrolled risks, or if authorization list substances are entering the EU in imported articles in significant quantities. Once proposed by ECHA's Risk Management and Socioeconomic Analysis Committees, a new restriction must be approved by the Commission's REACH Committee before being added to REACH Annex 17. Restrictions have powerful consequences and can be very wide-ranging, such as an outright ban, or they can be more nuanced where specific uses are targeted or uses exempted. It is therefore incredibly important to read the words of the restriction itself to determine the scope and intent.
Because of the wide consequences in a restriction, it can impact niche uses not known to the authorities. And so a lot of effort goes into consultation before agreement to minimize unintended supply chain or societal impacts whilst maximizing the benefit to human health and the environment in the restriction. Given the heavy consequences of both the authorization and restriction procedures, most, especially substances with a wide range of uses and those in critical applications, it is worth being aware of other risk control mechanisms alternatively used by authorities. Where substance risk is confined to the industrial workplace only, then a binding occupational exposure limit value may be determined under the Carcinogens and Mutagens Directive. ECHA's Risk Assessment Committee may propose such an exposure limit for agreement by the Commission. Such a binding exposure limit must be complied with by all companies irrespective of sector of use. The key benefit for industry in this route is that no authorizations or exemptions for, from restriction are needed, but a concern for industry may be whether the value is achievable or whether industry can apply sufficient risk controls to achieve such a level in practice. No derogations or exceptions are available. Where substance risk relates to industrial emissions only, whether to air, water or soil, then risk controls may be identified through the Industrial Emissions Directive. Industry will be expected to apply emission control measures identified in a Best Available te Techniques Reference Document or BREF. Emissions permits may be required from the relevant national authority. The authorities therefore have a big toolkit of chemical risk interventions including harmonised classification, impacting safety data sheets, use, transport and waste management, Identification as an SVHC, triggering disclosures in safety data sheets and in Article 33 disclosures or articles. Authorization listing, restrictions, binding occupational exposure limit values and industrial emissions controls. Each action has an impact and a consequence. Which tool is selected depends on individual market uses of a substance and consequences of its non-use. It is therefore incredibly important that industry, both upstream and downstream, are engaged in this process to help the authorities reach balanced outcomes. I hope you found this high-level overview helpful. Please in get in contact should you need further support and advice. And of course, please subscribe to the Reach Law Talks YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.